uh, greetings. So our group is going to present on the a Bengali film called Titas Ekti Nodi Nam. So get to the presentation. Uh, seven, uh, seven of us are going to present Ankit. Bharadwaj, Apur Devgiri, Dev Soni, Krishnan Makara, Anushita Jakraborty, Paulumi Ghosh, and myself, Elena Ghosh. So, yeah. Uh, Titash Akti Nodinam, uh, or a river called Titash, is a 1973 film that was a joint production between India and Bangladesh, uh, which was directed by Ritwik Ghatu. Uh, the movie was based on a novel by the same name, written by Adwaita Malabaram. Uh, the movie explores the life of the fisherman on the bank of Titas River in Bangladesh. So, a fisherman uh, by the river Titas, Kishore, uh, marries a young girl, Rajaji, who accidentally, uh, accidentally marries her. Uh, when he visits a nearby village. Now, after their wedding, when they are going back, Rajaji, the wife of Kishore, is kidnapped uh, by the bandits. So now, when uh, Kishore loses his bride, he, get, he becomes mad. On the other hand, uh, Rajaji, uh, she fights with the bandits and then jumps into the river and goes somewhere. But she's later uh, saved by some villagers of some distant place. Now, unfortunately, the young bride, Rajaji, uh, does not know anything about her husband, not even his name. Uh, the only thing that she remembers is uh, the place, uh, the village where Kishore belonged to. Now, 10 years later, she attempts to find her husband, Kishore, uh, with their son. Now, when she goes back to the village, some of the residents of Kishore's village refuse to, you know, help them with food or shelter or anything because there was al already a threat of starvation going there. The river was drying up. And this young widow, Basanti, uh, she helps both Rajaji and her son. Now, later, it turns out that Rajaji's husband, uh, Kishore, and this widow who helped her, Basanti, were childhood lovers. Now, uh, the film can be interpreted from various angles, but uh, for this presentation, we shall be looking at it from the discourse of Dalit studies. And I would uh, elaborate on the Dalit Chetna, which is the Dalit consciousness that comes from the emotions or reasons of their lived experiences of the film, uh, despite the fact uh, that the film was directed by Ghatak, who belonged to an upper caste and came from a very privileged background. Now, though the film is directed by Ghatak, it was written by Advaita Malabaram, as I had mentioned before. Now, Advaita Malabaram's career as a writer was very different from most of the Bhadralok writers of his age, who wrote about rural, who wrote about rural life in Bengal. Now, with Bhadralok, I mean the upper caste privileged authors of that time. So that they so the way they wrote the rural Bengal and the way Malabaram wrote the rural Bengal were very different to each other, given to the lived experiences of them. So now Malabaram's journey uh, has been read by many as the story of a man who has struggled his way up from a village to city. Now, his novel has been received. Now, this particular novel has been received as an authentic rendition of the lives of the innocent and uncorrupted Malos. He himself was a Malo, among whom he had lived and grown up and to whom he belongs to. However, in this adoration of the man's struggle, 
and the exoticization of his origin, what is often missed out is the interplay between his subject ex subjective experience as a man who has struggled and made his way to the city and his objective experience as a Malo who used to live the life he has been depicting in the story. So now this is where we have the dilemma of locating the author's position. Moving on to the next point that the more, okay, when we look at the film, the most notable character, non-human character in the film is that of the river. Now the river Titash play, Titash plays a role of positioning the characters and throws light upon the various tropes of the story. Now the protagonist, uh, Kishore, but named as Ananta, uh, the protagonist Kishore, you know, uh, has a desire to know and travel the world in the desire of gaining autonomy over space. Not surprisingly, his will to knowledge is tied up with his will to be mobile, to escape the uh, insularity or the ensuing, ensuing deracination. His line of fight saves him from the fate of the rest of the people who face the forcible eviction as the river dries up and the battle for land overpowers them. Now, Ananta's movement can be seen with that of the flowing river, where he wants to grow, portraying a modern Dalit character. Now, the idea of that the Dalit can claim autonomy only through his willful act of spatial mobility is being portrayed here. The entire notion of a Dalit coming out of his oppressive position through knowledge is something that we see is being played here in parallel, keeping it parallel with the flowing river. So both of them draw parallels from each other and hence the theme, hence the theme is justified through the river. Next, uh, coming to the film aesthetics, uh, in general, anger and rage have been the most prominent aesthetic tools of Dalit literature. Like their subversion has often been located in the rage as well as in the ability to shock the middle class viewers and to bring them out of their complacency and amnesic existence. Like, for example, what we have seen in Jai Bheem or, or any other film like that. Now, this Ghatak's film or Malabaram's novel offer a very different kind of an aesthetic when we compare it with that. Now, it is not rage, but it's sentimentality or compassion that guides the entire narrative. It also comes as a surprise given that Dalit writings focus on anger and rage and antagonism. Here, the narrator names the very act of, you know, uh, narration as a his uh, as as their history as Doro de Ritihash, which means history of compassion. Now the sentimental position that creates the Dalit consciousness in the narrative is something that defines the, the entire idea of Dalit Chetna throughout the film. So uh, what we see is that despite the film coming from a very privileged making, it portrays, uh, it portrays a Dalit consciousness shedding light on the Dalit emotions and reasons coming from their experiences and hence presenting a Dalit consciousness. So uh, thank you. Uh, the next person will continue after this. So I will be speaking on Dalit identity and ecology and the aspect of emotion adhered to it. Uh, in the film Tita Shetty Modulna, uh, 
we are discussing about the Malo community, which is the Dalit fisherman community of the village. And uh, Bengal witnessed a significant social, cultural, economic, and political change in the early 20th century in the colonial context. And uh, the Malo community is mostly settled in the territory, territorially organized civilizational space in the northern and eastern Bengal, which is also majorly in Bangladesh now. Uh, so it is a Dalit community with daily environmental labor, subsistence issues, and a cultural community with a unique uh, blend of the Vaishnava Bhakti, that is the devotional sentiment, and the Sufi spiritualism, which is mystical Islamic belief. And the villages, residences, occupational and social groups, animals, plants, foods, migration, movements, and all of this is a part of the very intricate collective development that is very intersectional within the Dalit culture. Uh, and then uh, the river Titash, however, is, uh, you know, considered as the home for this Malo community. And all the Malo people in around, in and around Titash, the river Titash are considered as, as human beings first be, before uh, their caste. And uh, this is something very unique about this film or this community in Bengal, and which is not really uh, very evident in most of the Dalit narratives. Moreover, the emergence of the layered movements among the low caste groups in uh, Bengal, such as the Rajbongshis and the Nomoshudras in northern and eastern, eastern districts, which considers some parts of present-day Tripura and most of uh, Bangladesh districts, such as Kumila, Nuakhali, etc. Uh, so, in this case, also in this film, we see that all these Malo people living in the village do not really uh, dwell in brick houses and uh, with walls around them, and they don't even go and mingle with the upper caste people as such. Whatever the film shows is very intra-community, right? And uh, they do not even take the pathways that lead to the main town or the main villages, uh, which is often used by the Brahminical uh, people of the same village. Uh, the river plays a very, very important role in this film and in the community as well. Uh, the river is view, showed in such a way throughout the film and in the novel as well, because <clears throat> since it is the adaptation uh, of the novel by Adwita Molle uh, who himself was a Dalit author. And uh, like in the novel, as well as in, in the film, the river plays a very, a very, very important role. And it's like it is keeping an eye on the community. And the interconnectedness between the river and the lives of the Malo people, it's, it's very eco-feministic in nature, right? And the Malos have a life of their own, their unique meanings, their own environment, their own... Uh, events which is has hindu inclination but it's not like they have certain pujas which are not very uh much in practice in upper caste hindu societies such as uh the bhag Devi puja and uh, ne next is uh the maloness that emerges from the mundane uh livelihood through their behaviors and their way of cultural and a way of perceiving cultural and societal values, which is uh, very again ecocentric in nature. As every day we see how the characters such as Bashwanti or Ornanto's mother or Kishore wake up and they go by the side of the river. They do their work, and the river is there in most of the uh, scenes or or the 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 things they have brought from the river is there and it is all very very connected to the nature in itself uh, also another important aspect is we never really see an upper caste man engaging with the river titash throughout the film and it is like titash is a part of the malo community exclusively and uh, their emotions their daily lives their happiness their sorrows everything is linked with that particular river Further, the adaptive film locates itself within the framework of contemporary developments. As we mentioned, as mentioned before, the Rajvangshi and Namoshutra developments, uh, the film was made 
uh, in such a like the novel when it was written it was uh, written in such a time when these uh, lower caste groups were uh, you know gaining power also another important aspect is that when the film was made uh, the tribal people of bengal in north bengal especially were gaining power so uh, which ultimately lead, led to the naxal movement but again uh, although it is not very intensely connected but the entire idea of lower caste people tribal people having agency and being portrayed on the main screen played an important role in the contemporary framework of developments also uh, for example uh, if you see how the river and the life of malo community are interconnected uh, we can see how the malo's caste cultural narratives are very prominent and decisive in nature uh, the parching heat of the sun and the growing strain of the working and everything throughout the film it is a nuanced portrayal of the nature and the communities uh, Uh, the, the nature and the community running parallel right uh, so there is the scene where there is this uh, brahmin person who goes to this uh, house of a person from the community and he loses his identity he loses his caste sorry and uh, he stays there with the family for the rest of the time uh, and there is no such visible conflict but uh, an emotional you know connection that gets developed uh, between the upper not really connection that develops between the upper and lower caste but it's it's a connection that is created since this brahminical person has to withdraw his own brahminical identity and get mingled with the fisherman community even after like after just drinking water from there right which again calls for interconnectedness and Uh, somewhat the aspect of interdining with uh, uh, as per ambedkar's idea uh, moreover when uh, ananta's mother uh, goes comes into the village for the first time we see how her caste is the primary question even before her village or her who is who her husband is what her, her identity is caste plays the primary role uh, so yeah this will be my point i would ask the next person to speak hello i'll be talking about the portrayal of culture of the malo community in the film titas ekti nodina now for the malos the river titas its tributaries and canals carry multi layered and complex social economic cultural and natural values they embody a dynamic interplay between social integration cultural diversity and economic usage and are crucial for social spatial and economic transformation of society for them flowing and living by the river is the center of life and livelihood now the malo community have a dynamic cultural life they have their own social cultural networks they organize community events they love songs dances festivals ceremonies within the community and they also have a distinct religious identity in the film in the film the malo community's cultural actions appear regularly but are not always in a fixed frame of typical hindu festivals rather they are in tandem with the process of river folk life uh, corresponding to the ever changing rivers seasons and months for them the, the, the freedom in river space trans- strengthens their sense of an autonomous cultural consciousness as they are participating in a variety of cultural and social worlds without inhibitions and self containment as you can see in the picture and the film wonderful different baul songs that are songs folk songs composed by both hindus and muslims originate every day from the malo fishermen moving on traversing on their boats in the river and the themes of these songs are not confined to a specific place and time they have divine eternal and spiritual elements with the references of the malo's living world now proceeding to the role of women in the cultural sphere of malo community women overall 
have an overarching presence in the community. They are an integral, integral part of the Malo society. They appear independently and are with par with men. They exist as human beings with their distinct spheres of physicality, appearance, labor, love, and loss. The film does not simply portray them as Mother Earth, inheriting them with some essential qualities in relation to nature. Rather, their experiences and practices have a complex relationship with the everyday Malo society, where they have their own space, time, and agency. Throughout the film, we see Malo women of various ages that are thoroughly grounded into multiple activities ranging from birth, marriage and death in river and boat, in land and agriculture, in festival and ceremony. Now I'll be passing on the mic to the next person. I'll be talking about how narratives are constructed or rather how narratives get constructed. Having engaged in various tropes, themes and ideologies in Dalit literature like personalist political, subaltern voicing, voice appropriation, linguistic directness, etc. Not only through Dalit studies course, but also through various other texts from gender studies, disability studies, ecological studies, from feminist standpoints or from every other literary standpoints and social standpoints, we arrive at a signified conclusion on how the various factors operate on the uh, narrative construction. So I'm going to relate this with the chosen text. So as you can see in the uh, presentation, there are various factors acting, factors like the author's backgrounds, academic and cultural. So uh, out of the three fallacies in literature, uh, the personal fallacy plays a major role in bringing out the signifier and the signified in various narratives. Uh, in this film, Tidas Ekti Nadir Nam, a river named Tidas, authored by Advaita Malabarman, his background, the author's background, stands reflective in the narrative. The author sought self-exile, purposefully maintaining a distance from his colleagues and friends. So uh, this personal fallacy and also as Paulmi uh, points out in her section of uh, representative, uh, representations and intersections, his life was a representative of uh, Dalit or Ambedkarite subjects conceived in the post-Panther Dalit writings. So this indirectly refers to the point of uh, the double bind, inclusive exclusion idea that Dalits are systematically excluded from academic and other circles. Uh, so this idea learned in Ankit uh, Kawade's text, The Impossibility of Dalit Studies. Also in one of the articles on um, understanding Dalit Chetna in Advaita Malabarman's uh, Tita Shekhti Nadirna, a river called Titas by uh, Dishad Bharti Bharki, she mentions the structural system of societies of instant Dalits. Like she mentions, and I quote, um, the city offers them a modern life and some benefits of the middle class life in terms of uh, job or education. However, their middle class existence is often punctuated by anxiety, alienation and disenchantment as caste reinvents itself in the city and newer forms and continues to marginalize them in various ways. Uh, this can be analyzed as the commercialization of identities, middle class, upper caste and uh, Dalits as we have uh, studied in um, Sharmila Reyes texts and in um, the uh, play Daham Thirst written by Vinodini. So, all these factors can be seen reciprocated in the film from a personal standpoint of the author. So this is how um, narratives get constructed from the uh, author's cultural, academic and um, his lifestyle background. So this was my point. Thank you. So yes, so I will be talking about the intersectionality of the Dalit identity and gender within the movie and the representation of the same. 
So beginning firstly, the movie Tita Shakti Nodirna is a post-colonial piece which showcases the perpetuation of caste system which had infiltrated during the films of the time. Coming over to the representation of the Dalit author, the movie is an adaptation of a book by the same name written by Malabarman who is a journalist, a poet and a translator who belongs to the Malo community which is the fisherman's community of Bangladesh. So now his writing has been representative of the Dalit Ambedkarite subjects, which has been a part of the post panther Dalit writings. The reason for the same is because in his narrative, there is an accentuation of the marginalization of the caste system, which is a result of the modernization in the city, uh, which has led to a further very clear-cut demarcation of the caste system leading to an alienation of the Dalit sentiments. Moreover, the narrative is about a person who has traversed the region, has migrated to the city and is looking back at it. There is also an offshoot of a binary coming to the intersectionality part of the same. There is a double bind which comes into play because of the sufferings of the women within the patriarchal system of dominance. So the binaries of the, so the binary which comes into the movie is of the violent, irrational Dalit man who has been uh, dominated by the upper caste men again. And there is a very naive, innocent portrayal of the Dalit woman who has been a sufferer of both the upper caste patriarchy as well as patriarch, as well as uh, the violence from their own, from the men of their own community. So they experience gender discrimination and domestic violence, which has been led, which has led to a double patriarchal oppression. One is of course the intrinsic patriarchy by the men of the community where they're beaten by men, they're abused, sexually abused by men within the families of their own. And there is extrinsic patriarchy, which has been very evident into the movie, which uh, leading through the oppression and exploitation of the Dalit women of the dominant castes. Tras has special stories of spaces, places, place imaginations and practices of Malo community. In the beginning, river appears on earth as an unlimited free space. The river space itself is a key marker of earth and time. Malos create places out of river spaces and give them their distinct look, feel, and ambience. These spaces, villages, huntments, banks, in turn are inseparable from the spaces they have evolved. Malo community as a whole have their space place attachments and associated practices. Maloness is based on a unity between space, place, and society. In the course of the river journeys at different times, Malo's activities and practices also represent. Dalit imaginations of rivers, commons, and community. They also challenge the under cables of environmental and social controls that are laid to work in the river areas through several internal and external mechanisms. At the same time, Malos have tremendous ability to move into new places and make them of their own. Discussing the imagination of space and place in environmental criticism, the famous eco critic. Buell talks about a five-dimensional phenomenology of subjective place attachment that together makes possible a critical gasp of place as subjective horizon. Place consciousness and bonding evolves from an orientation in space as well as a temporal orientation. At the spatial level, there is a different mental mapping. Traditionally, it has been a strong emotional identification with the home base from which most of one's life is led. However, this changes under modernization when homes can be spread at different places. Imagining a place can become an important element in place attachment. It also has temporal dimensions. In Tatash, moral fishermen, Malo fishermen are always on the move and during their long journeys and boats, often anchor themselves at several places and stay over time with people from the community. However, on the river banks, Malo community as a whole and women especially have hard thumbing everyday lives. Malo men and women inhabit villages where they live, work, play and worship. They migrate to new Malo places. They imagine new places and even when they are slipping away from the river zone in changing situations, 
they have a sense of you no know, place yeah so i will be concluding this presentation and in conclusion a river named das is a great example of a film that encompasses a lot of different important aspects of being part of a um, dalit community that lives by the river bank and faces a lot of different situations and circumstances in living their lives i'll be reiterating some important points from the presentation we done so far so the river is seen as a major aspect and a major theme of the film because it sets up a lot of important narrative plot points in the narratives and at the same time it helps the audience and the viewers better understand certain characters within the film their relations to the community as well as the community in general um the rivers as well as the adjoined river banks could be considered and be read as a representative of the life of an individual within the malo community and as a rep- as a representative of the malo community itself um it shows it shows how the people of the community and their never ending struggle to always keep moving in a dynamic manner to always keep moving ahead in order to find always a better place a better place or a better source of their livelihood a better place where they can settle and find a better life for themselves um and every person within the malo community is important and integral towards the overall existence of the community this includes both men and women all of them are involved in some sort of work that is of benefit towards the community the malos could be seen as an extension of the river itself where the river goes they go as well as shown by the migratory nature of the migratory nature of the community with changes in seasons just like how the river goes through a different number of unpredictable changes it can be seen as a parallel towards how within the malo community the individuals within it go through a lot of different stages in their lives and a lot of events transpire such as birth death and marriages which are just as unpredictable like the ro their identities their livelihoods and lives of the individuals in the malo community are all shaped by the river making it the sole pillar of their existence one day when the river would eventually dry up causing a lot of damage to its surroundings the river banks and the communities that had settled on its shores but when that day comes so when that day would come the malo community would have moved on to another place to find yet another source of livelihood and identity and yet another place where they could be happy and attached to the place which they had just found thank you